Good morning, neighbors. Let's sing this classic hymn by Philip Bliss. Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Alleluia! What a
I mentioned that this song was written by a man named Philip Bliss, who lived in the 1800s, uh, was a song leader with D.L. Moody. Uh, could have been very well him and D.L. Moody instead of Sankey and Ira Sankey and Moody, who became quite famous as evangelists in the and uh, Ira Sankey was the musical director, but Philip Bliss was born in extreme poverty, but his parents were very godly. He didn't get much education, but he said, I remember clearly my mother teaching me from the Bible, my father's prayers, and he did what he could to help the family survive. And he mentioned this story how uh, he, he was, he didn't know it because he was so poor, but he was a musical prodigy. Uh, but he was never around anything other than the reeds that you would pick in the you know, out of tall grass and things and blowing through those. But one day he remembered the first time he heard a piano. He was just a young boy, and he was in town selling vegetables from his parents' garden trying to make some money. And he said he was so poor he didn't have shoes, and, but he said, I heard this. He thought, what, what is this music? And he climbed over the fence. He didn't realize he was doing anything wrong and stood in this doorway from the, from the balcony watching this young woman play the piano. He stood there in his bare feet, and uh, when she stopped, he said, oh, lady, would you please play some more? And she turned around and was shocked that he was there and yelled at him, get, get out of here with your big, dirty, bare feet. And uh, this shame and this, you know, it really kind of goes along with what this, this song that he would eventually write, this man of sorrows. And uh, he left home when he was young trying to make some... Uh, Trust trying to survive really and he eventually he becomes an adult he goes to the Civil War and uh, and serves and but it, he begins to de develop this love for Christ that he had always had but it wasn't until he's was about 12 years old when he said I was actually converted and he begins as he grows older uh, to uh, use this gift that he had in the music ministry and this song uh, Man of Sorrows he actually sang and played in uh, the Michigan City, Indiana penitentiary. And they said in this, the words of this song just broke many of these prisoners' hearts and they began to seek salvation. And he was a very gifted man and he began to, to become acquainted with people like D.L. Moody. Uh, he really served with a man named D.W. Whittle as the music minister. And it's amazing because this song, It Is Well, he actually wrote the music to that because he knew the man who suffered the great loss to who, who was inspired with these words. But he knew it in poverty and struggling throughout his life to try to climb out of that hole uh, what it was to be in debt, to uh, be a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, not, a, uh, not unlike his Savior. And sadly, uh, he was invited to uh, D.L. Moody's church to sing and to play and his train that he and his wife were on, Philip Bliss's train, uh, crashed into the river, or icy river in the middle of winter uh, around December 29th, December 30th, 1876. And he lost his life. And some people, he, this one man said, you know, I believe he, that I saw him crawl out of a window, you know, and he had survived the crash, but he went back in to try to help his wife and the train caught on fire and they died together. And he sacrificed himself for his wife. You know, and you see, even in the sad story though, he had hope because they found in his trunk some some song lyrics he'd been writing, and one was, he knows, and speaking about his Savior, he knows, but he kindly veils my eyes. You know, he, I see my sins, I see the troubles that may lie ahead, but the Lord, he protects me from that and just helps me to live my life and, and the life that I'm living right now. But in, it is inspired, I believe, by Isaiah 53, in verse 4, it says, Surely he hath borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth, He's brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so, uh, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. 
and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. You know, he, sometimes as a Christian, we want to live such a, everything is perfect now life. But our Savior did not have that kind of life. He took upon him our sorrows. And he was acquainted with our grief. He understood us. He understood what it was to see death. He understood, you know, he saw Joseph die, his uh, stepfather, the man who r raised him, you know, Mary's husband. Uh, he saw these sorrows. He saw the sick. He saw the people in poverty. He saw the people who were being unjustly taxed. And the uh, thing is, he saw our sin. And he took it upon him. And like a lamb going to the slaughter, he opened on his mouth. He took it upon us. So sometimes, even though we see Philip Bliss and all this gift that he had, we see such sorrow in his life. But in that sorrow, he was able to, you know, you can either become miserable your whole life, or you can use it to help lift up others. And he found a peace in Christ. Like he said, there was never a moment I didn't believe in Christ, as far as he knew, because he was raised that way. But in his struggles, he wanted to use it to glorify the Lord, and he helped those prisoners. He's helped millions of people since through his songs, and that's what we can do. We can take upon, you know, like Mr. Rogers would teach, you know, you can try to tell people don't be sad, or you can sit there, sit there with them in their sorrow, and that is really love and friendship and kindness. And Jesus Christ offered us that, you know, so even in our grief, he was there to help take part of it and uh, take it with him to the grave and give us victory so that we can have joy eternally. So God bless you all this day in Jesus Christ's name.